Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to be back. I'm sorry I went a little, you know, off grid on my YouTube channel. It's just that I went back to work and it was kind of an adjustment. And so, um, but I'm back. I'm back and today we're going to be talking about the awesome crime of Jambonay Ramsey. Today we're going to be talking about her case and, you know, kind of like what happened to her. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe and the little button down there. And if you want to know about Jambonay Ramsey, then just keep on watching. Jambonay Ramsey was named after her dad, John Bennett, and her mother, Patricia. Patricia. She was born on August 6th. 1990 so she would have been 30 years old now and she was born in Atlanta Georgia he had one sibling and his name was Burke he was I believe three three or four years um, older than her John Bennett was described as an ongoing girl she had a huge smile and she loved being the center of attention she competed in beauty pageants and by the age by the age of six years old she had already won multiple pageant titles thanks to her bouncy hair huge smile and just super bubbly personality she absolutely loved her costumes to be super glittery and that is something that really made her stand out in the pageants because she loved super glittery costumes. Her father, John, was a multi-millionaire businessman and her mom was actually a, she used to compete in beauty pageants as well. She was actually Miss West Virginia in 1977. The family lived in a five bedroom um, huge house in Boulder, Colorado. On December 25th, 1996, the Ramses attended a uh, family friends Christmas party When they got home John Bennett went straight up to bed and everybody said their you know good nights and off to bed the following morning on December 26 at 5 30 a.m. Patricia Woke up to make some coffee and she discovered a ransom note by the back stairs that was leading to the kitchen now this letter said that her daughter JonBenet was kidnapped the letter read and I quote you will withdraw a hundred and eighteen thousand from your account one hundred thousand will be in one hundred bills and the remaining 18,000 will be in $20 bills. Oddly, um, this was the exact amount that John Bennett's father, John Bennett, had gotten as his Christmas bonus, which again, it was kind of odd. The note also said to not call the police, um, but obviously Patricia did call. Fine on them, ma'am. We have a kidnapping. All right, please explain to me what's going on, okay? Yeah, we have a and it didn't take long for the Boulder Police Department to come to their house. Officer Rick French arrived at the home and he did a search of the house just obviously to verify that, you know, John Bennett was not like hiding in a room or something. There's a detective by the name of Linda Arndt. Aren't it? I don't know how to pronounce that last name. She actually asked John Bennett and one of um, Bennett's friend, which last name was White, but that was a family friend. And the detective actually asked them to do a top to bottom search of the house as well. Which, I mean, if you do know of like crim um, crime scenes and you know about, you know, murders, you know that keeping the crime scene intact is like super essential. For the investigation and when I read that the um, police officer or the detective had asked you know John to go and search the house I was like are you you're a detective like you should know better than that so John Bennett searched the house and unfortunately this is a time where he actually found John Bennett's 
um, body. She was found in the spare bedroom of the basement. JonBenet looked like she had been strangled and she had uh, duct taped on her mouth as well as on her neck. John grabbed the body and he ran upstairs screaming. Um, you know, at this time, he had already contaminated the scene um, by moving the body. Unfortunately, this was the first mistake that was, you know, made. Um, you know, the detective shouldn't have asked the dad to go and search the house um, because they were contaminating the crime scene. So this unfortunately was not the first mistake that the police department made. The Boulder Police Department made uh, crucial errors that compromised the whole investigation. Another mistake was that um, when they were interrogating the parents, they usually, in a you know, in other investigations that I've read about, they usually separate both parents to ask them questions about you know the night before. And in this case, the police department did not. They questioned them together, and. I don't know, I just find that very odd. Why didn't they separate them? At 1045, the Boulder County's coroner team removed John Bennett's body from the house. December uh, 28th, the family went to the Boulder Police Department and they willingly gave hair, blood, and handwriting samples. Obviously, the handwriting samples were to compare the um, to the ransom note that you know the murderer had left. On December 31st, Jamine was laid to rest in Marietta, Georgia, uh, next to her older sister, um, half-sister Elizabeth, who had died in a tragic car accident in 1992. On January 1st, 1997, John Benet and Patricia Ramsey, mm, and on January 1st, 1997, John and Patricia Ramsey uh, gave a New Year's Eve interview to CNN and on January 2nd of 1992 so the next day a team of five detectives flew from Boulder to Atlanta which was where uh, the Ramses were staying at uh, because investigators were shocked that the Ramses decided to give a TV uh, interview because they have claimed that they were too emotional to talk to the police. Now, I watched the interview and I just felt that the family was not emotional at all. Um, it was kind of weird that the mom actually kind of like would describe and she would only refer to um, John Benet as John Benet. Like she did not say like, oh, my daughter or, you know, they talked about how... Um, there were a lot of, um, he used innuendos as the word to describe that people were talking about how um, John Benet was sexually assaulted and that he or, you know, that hadn't happened, um, as well as talking about how, you know, a lot of people thought that they had actually killed Benet and, and that they were like all in it and he was just going over and talking how you know, they would have never hurt their daughter. They loved, you know, they loved their daughter and they would never, like, lay a hand on, on her. Again, it was... I'm going to link it down below because, to me, they just didn't seem as emotional as I would think a family that just lost their daughter um, would react. They were just very meh. They were just serious um, both of them they did not like shed a tear like they did not cry or anything and obviously you i i mean personally i found that a little bit concerning um like i said i i can only imagine how you can you know what you must feel that you know you found the body of your daughter literally like strangled and you have that image in your head and you like don't shed a tear like that's my personal opinion you know i just I found it a little bit odd. Based on an expert analysis, a handwriting analysis uh, eliminated John as a suspect, but Patricia was still considered a suspect. 
allegedly there is evidence that the person that who wrote the ransom letter actually practiced it on another piece of paper that apparently they found at the Ramsey's house. By April 19, 1997, the Ramseys had actually become uh, the primary suspects in the investigation. Patricia was questioned for six and a half straight hours and her statements did replace the ones that they had taken at first before um, when they had questioned them together. On June 14, 1997, the autopsy reports were released. These confirm a deep ligature around the victim's neck and another one around the wrist and this was evidence that she was bounded and strangled. Blood and abrasions were found in the vaginal area of JonBenet and these obviously you know implied that she was sexually assaulted. She was actually struck in the head violently to cause bleeding. There was an 8.5 inch fracture to her skull. John Bonnet's official cause of death was asphyxia by strangulation associated with craniocerebral cerebral trauma and her death was classified as a homicide. Another error that I think that the police committed was that on, June, on January 29th of 1998, so almost two years, the police barely was asking the Ramses for the clothing that they were wearing, you know, the prior night. Due to everything that was coming up and, you know, they had no clue who had killed John Bonet, for them to take almost two years to ask for the clothes that they were, like, you would think that, you know, the first night that, you know, they took John Bonet's body and everything and opened up the actual investigation, because obviously it was clear that she was murdered, they would have asked for everything from the Ramses, you know, they would have, like, prevented anybody from walking into the crime scene they would have asked for all the clothes for everything so i don't know it's just there's a lot of details that kept kept coming up that made me question like why did the police decide to do this so late or to let just anybody walk through the house it was just i just couldn't wrap my head around that it was just really confusing Originally, the Ramses had said that Burke, which was the older, Domine's older brother, he was sleeping the morning where, when Patricia had uh, called the police and he had woken up when the police had arrived home. However, on August 20th, 1998, the 911 tape was enhanced and it came up that Burke's voice was reportedly heard in the background of that 911 call. On December 1999, the Boulder Grand Jury voted to indict John and Patricia in, uh, for their alleged role in the murder of John Bonet, meaning that they actually thought that they had something to do with the murder. However, the district attorney, Alex Hunter, decided to not charge them in the case that they did not have sufficient evidence against them. I just feel that if they would have if they would have taken charge since the beginning of the investigation you know there have been I think they should they would have been a lot more evidence for them to work with on March of 2000 the Ramses published a book titled the death of innocence about their daughter's murder along with a publicity campaign to promote the book Unfortunately, four years later in 2004, Patricia Ramsey passed away from ovarian cancer at the age of 49. And she was actually buried next to John Benet in uh, Marietta, Georgia. Now, John claims that he has lost um, his entire family's fortune after being a multi-millionaire in the 1990s. In 2016, Burke, Jambonet's older brother, appeared in the Dr. Phil show and he finally broke his silence of 20 years and he finally spoke uh, because he had not given any interviews before and so this was kind of like a huge deal and I'm going to insert a clip and I'm going to link it down below because if you have time please watch that interview. It was kind of disturbing just to see the way that he expressed himself in the interview. And Phil, Dr. Phil asks, 
I did ask him like like what did you think when you like you know saw John John Monet and he like described like how he saw her is just disturbing and he had this smirk on his face when he was talking about the whole like you know incident or you know situation and it gave me chills just watching that interview because like I said he had this like smirk when he was like talking about it I remember the casket was small and her eyes were closed I think one of her eyes was a little bit like droopy or something I thought that was weird how did you feel seeing her a lot of sadness I don't think I really fully grasped just, like after this I won't see her again so it has now been 24 years and Jamine's Ramsey's case has not been solved. Um, and to be honest, I don't think it will ever be. Um, I've watched many videos and I've done my research and there are so many theories out there as to, you know, who murdered um, Jamine. I personally think the brother had something to do with it. The theory is that he had something to do with it and that the parents covered for him um, I think I think that I think something like that must have happened because again the police made so many errors and it's so unfortunate because it's so sad that you know knowing that a child I mean anybody was murdered and for them to commit so many errors in order to um, have the crime scene intact and be able to fulfill the investigation I think that was just so wrong of the police that is it for today's case um it is it was it was kind of heavy researching she was such a beautiful girl and i'm pretty sure she would have done amazing things um she had a career at six years old and you know it just it's so so sad and i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe in the little button down there as always the products that i use in today's video are going to be linked down in the description box as well as my social media and until then i'll see you guys on my next one bye